Oh, Rob from Cheshire, thank you. Good to have a Brit in there. Eva from oh, Sydney, wow, that's fantastic. 4.30 p.m. We're Indonesia. from Indonesia, welcome. Okay, well, what a wonderful way to start the day for those of us who are in um, Europe, but also to welcome friends from across the world to this first of our Spring Stream events. Um, we are uh, very delighted to put on this mini conference for Christian communicators and we are MAI, Media Associates International, and we are particularly the Europe group of trustees who are putting this event on for you. Um, you might have heard that we were going to have an event in Prague, a wonderful, beautiful city in the spring, but Corona had other ideas. So instead of that, we are putting on this digital conference. It's a new venture for us. And this is the first one. So we're hoping that it's going to be a really good experience for everyone. A few things about how this is going to work. Um, you can all participate on the chat. There's also a question and answer function at the bottom. If you go to the bottom part, you'll see participants where you can see who else is on the call. You see chat where you can um, put where you're from. And then we also have the Q&A. And during the course of the webinar, if you wanna ask a question to the panelists, put it in there. At the end of the session, I will be um, choosing some of the questions from there and putting them to our panelists. So uh, please do participate, get your thinking hats on, and um, we look forward to hearing your questions. So we are very excited to be welcoming the wonderful Martin Mansa and the wonderful Daniel Hofkamp today. Um, we are gonna be looking at the topic of working at home and we couldn't have two better panelists to be thinking about working at home because while the rest of us were commuting to offices, these two men were going ahead and learning for us about what life working at home looks like. Now, Martin Mansa, who is an editor and trainer from based in the UK, has been working at home for, you will not believe it, 40 years. I have to say that's longer than I've been alive. So uh, this is a wonderful wealth of experience that he is looking forward to sharing uh, with us today in this conversation. Um, a few other things I'd like to tell you about Martin. Uh, he has, since 1980, uh, edited 200 reference books. I don't think I've read 200 reference books. Um, since 2001, he has also been leading courses on topics ranging from time management, project management, business skills, communication skills, the list goes on. Um, he's also uh, married to the wonderful Yusandra, and he has a daughter who lives next door and a son who lives on the other side of the world. So uh, we'll be delighted to hear from you, Martin. Uh, Daniel is based in Spain and uh, he is the editor of Protestante Digital, which I learned to say before this call, um, which is an online website, thanks Daniel, an online website um, sharing news and opinion from a Christian perspective. It is based in Spain and has a Spanish audience, but also an amazing following in Latin America. And um, they've been particularly working hard in the recent season on covering coronavirus in Spain, which has obviously been a very big deal. Um, as well as being uh, an editor, Daniel is also the father to a six month old baby called Adrian um, and uh, his wife's name is Marian. Is that right? Yes. Very good. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, to kick off, I would like to know, you work at home, could you describe your home a bit for us and even the office area in which you work? So Martin, would you like to start? We can see a little bit of your office which is exciting. I see the Oxford English Dictionary, maybe a Bible, a calendar. Um, thanks for sharing your, your home with us. But could you just describe more of what home looks like to you? Okay, well, I'm sitting in a converted garage. So outside me is a minor road. Uh, tragically, the London bomber, one of the London bombers lived down the end of the road. Um, but we are in a place called Aylesbury, which is... 40 miles or so from London. If you think of the tube map, 
you've got uh, Amersham at the northwest and we're 15 miles further out than that. And our home is a semi-detached house, a very ordinary house. It has three bedrooms, one of which I've converted into a model railway room because our daughter who's now living next door uh, has vacated that and other bedrooms, bathroom. Uh, as I say, I work from the converted garage. We've got a kitchen downstairs, a living room. And then at the back of the house, we've got what we call the library, which has even more books and is certainly tidier than this. So I, I don't, as you can see, tidy this up very often. I do sweep the floor very often, pretty occasionally, pretty often, um, but that's, that's it. And I've got a table in front of me and lots of books and a phone and computer screens and things. Fantastic. Thanks, Daniel. Tell us about where you are. We noticed your very tidy shelves, but you tell me it's your wife's influence. So tell us a bit more about your home, your context. Yeah, um, well, uh, now we are living in a, in a house. It's, a, it's a, um, a house with two floors. And in the, in the second floor, we have the, the rooms. And in the first floor, we have a, a living room, a kitchen, um, and, and uh, a desk, uh, a, a, another room that we transform for, to, 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 to have a, a desk here. And we are working here. Um, every, um, I, I'm working here, and also my wife is working here. Mm. So we have uh, the, the, the computers here, and, and some, some of the books that are more for working. In the living room, we have the other books for for leisure and for and other things, uh, but uh, we we try to have this space only for for work. Great, yeah, amazing that you and your wife are working at home. So that's an added dimension that a lot of us are living with at the moment, not to be working on our own at home, but yeah. with us as well. And so we'll touch on that later. Um, okay, to start off, I'd like to just ask. What is the thing that you most enjoy about working at home? Because unlike the rest of us who may have been suddenly plunged into working at home without choosing it, both of you have chosen in some way for some reason to work at home. So I'd like to know why um, you enjoy working at home. And I'll start with you, Daniel. OK, um, one thing I, I, I enjoy is that um, I could uh, work very uh, with, with a lot of efficiency in mm -hmm. in in w when I can concentrate on, on my work mm -hmm. and do I don't have to go to anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, in a minute I I'm working and mm -hmm. in just minutes I'm not working. <laughs> uh -huh. And this is a, th a thing that I I really like to because. Um, if I want to enjoy with my family time, uh, I, 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 I could uh, make a schedule where uh, the, the, the time when we, you are w going to work and the time when you are back in, going back to your, your home is, is just, okay, it's not, it's not exist. So uh, this is one of the things that I most enjoy. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I, 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 in, in my circumstance, I enjoy that uh, I'm not working alone. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, I, I'm working in my project, but my wife is also working in, in her projects, but we are in the same room. And this, this is something that uh, is uh, uh, helping me to concentrate more in, in, my, in my work. Because when you are alone, I, I, know, I notice that it's, it's more difficult. In some occasions, we are uh, working uh, for, for different circumstances alone, and it's more, it's more difficult, I, 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 I could <laughs> tell you in my experience. So um, I think that, that this is the, the, the two more, more things that I enjoy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's really interesting. The working with other people to help us keep concentration or some people might find it more distracting so yeah. Martin what about you what do you find makes working at home work for you? I think the fact that I have obviously I don't have to commute as Daniel said you know there's a commute of in fact I have to make myself go out for a walk just to get some fresh air meet people and so on um, but I can the, the, the fact the major fact is that I can build up momentum mm. so there are very few interruptions there are interruptions um, and or distractions but it, you can build up momentum so that for me is the key thing and obviously you, you lose yourself in something 
uh, but you can you can get through a lot. You build up momentum, so you're not moving from well within a certain job. You might be moving from one aspect to another, but you can concentrate and uh, have a good stretch at something. Mm. Both of you have touched on something around concentration and certainly in my experience of working at home, I used to work at home a day a week, um, but now I have to work at home all the time. Distraction and concentration are two, um, two sides of working at home that I'd love us to just go a bit deeper on. Um, so I start to think about my laundry if I'm at home. If I'm at work, I probably wouldn't think at all about my laundry. So how do you um, live and work in the same space and not be distracted by things that are to do with your more domestic life. Maybe Martin, you can. Well, I think I, I turn them to my advantage. So I start at the moment I'm starting work about eight and about quarter to nine, nine, I'll have my first break. And what I'll do is I'll put, put the breakfast things into soak. Okay, so I won't wash them up. I'll just put them into soak. And then I can have a five minute break anyway, uh, doing that because we're not supposed to look at the screen forever and ever and ever. And then an hour or so later, I will wash them up and might tidy something up. So I'll actually put them in a sort of little box and say, okay, I'm not gonna deal with them now. Um, and also if things occur to me, like make a phone call constantly, wherever I am, apart from in a swimming pool, I have a pad of paper with me. And if things happen, I, I, I will write them down. It might be something domestic, uh, put the chicken on an hour and a half before we want to eat. Uh, or don't forget, I've just, my wife's come back from the shop wanting some chamomile tea, whether she's got that, I don't know. So yeah, putting them in a place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So taking the distractions and sort of refusing to let them in until you're ready for them. Is ideally, that Ideally, yes, that's the idea. Yeah, ideally. Yeah. Okay, great. Daniel, what about you? Uh, one thing that I, I find uh, useful is to schedule. Uh, the, the schedule is not only for work, it's also for another things that are work from home. So mm -hmm. like laundry or things like that. Uh, we, uh, as family, we, we, we saw that we, we need to schedule that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because uh, if, if you not, are not doing that, uh, you can find that maybe one day you have so much things to do in your home that you cannot work. So <laughs> yeah. uh, you have to schedule uh, all. Uh, all, um, and it's, it's not difficult when you when you are doing uh, like um, every every day and then every week and then every month and you are uh, um, building a, a like a schedule for almost everything that is you, you have to do mm. and this uh, gave you the opportunity to have more time to focus w uh, on what you have to do in, in the in the moment when you are working that's a great tip I for example in my whole life I've never planned meals but I found in this lockdown I have a new level of planning where mm. actually planning the meals has really released me from a lot of uh, daily stress because now I know what we're eating the whole week um, mm. but that was something that uh, yeah you've you've really encouraged me in that today of thinking about even scheduling the laundry I think I'll, I'll start doing that but I think it also depends on your personality, doesn't it? So it looks like Daniel and, and I are ordered people. My wife is very creative and that's obviously, you know, there are, I'll let you use your imagination for the uh, combining of the two. But uh, so I've, I've sometimes tried to be disorganized, but it's such hard work that I, it's far easier for me to be organized. But I do meet people on my courses who are disorganized, but often they say, I have to be organized at work. Mm. And I think that's it um, because time is money and, you know, you're paid to do an, a, a job and probably organisation is part of that job. And, and therefore being organised at home is, is an in, in, intrinsic part of that. Mm. Well, Martin, you've, you've picked on something very useful there about personality types. So I know that for my husband, working at home is a bit of a dream because he's more of an introvert and he's just really enjoying this season of not having to go into the office. And I find that I'm missing people a lot more than he is. So I was wondering, um, 
particularly Martin, since you've looked at uh, lots of different types of situation and people on your courses, would you say that there's a personality that works for working at home or can we all, now that we have to work at home, uh, find our own groove, uh, find our own way with working at home? I think we all have to. I think, I mean, in the paper, there were some letters saying, thank goodness, I, I don't have to talk to anybody now. And people have been you know, trying to get me to do that for decades. And now I don't have to. I, by nature, I'm uh, more of an introvert. And so, but I, I know for the first 10 years of my working life, I worked too hard. So I even got afraid to go out of the house and meet people. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I had to make arrangements walking around the block have lunch with people which I've been doing for the last 30 years so 10 years too too hard 30 years more mm -hmm. rounded so I think even if you're introvert you've got to make sure that you're you're leading a balanced lifestyle mm -hmm. um, if you're an extrovert and you're working from home that will be more difficult um, so maybe that the balance there is not so much as you say the help I want to be with people, but I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in front of a screen. Mm. So maybe the self-motivation comes more there. Mm. Yeah, that's great. And Daniel, do you have anything to add on, on that? About personality and work? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think that um, you have to find your way to, to work from home. And your personality could could be very important in, in, the, in, the, in the way that you could uh, build that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important to, to understand how, how you, you are, mm -hmm. and, but it's not very different from, from working in, an, in another place. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not different. Uh, you, you have to, to try to think in the, in the same way, mm -hmm. I think. Um, yeah. If you are a, a, a social person, you want to, to, to have conversation with people, okay, you, 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 will find, you, you will have to find a way to, to maintain that. Mm -hmm. If you are more a, so, uh, a lonely person and you want to focus only on your work, okay, you, you have very, very easy for you. Yeah. So, uh, but but you, you, you can find the, the, the tools to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not the same to, to have a coffee with people that to chat, but, but you can make Zoom calls, or you can make um, a, a, another another ways to, to to maintain contact with people. So uh, I think that uh, that uh, um, you could uh, find the, the way to to to, to work uh, from home and and to to, to have a a good um, a good experience. Yeah. But maybe you, you need time to, to understand how you are reacting to, to, to this, this new situation, if it's new for you. Yeah, that's really helpful, Daniel. I think knowing oneself seems yeah. to be a very key part of working well and knowing what works for you and what doesn't. I'm interested, participants, if you would like to share something of what you've learned so far about working at home in your context, then we'd love to hear from you. Pop it in the chat. If you have a question, please do put it in the question and answer box because we haven't got too many questions yet, but we'd love to see some. I see that we have one about procrastination, which we will be answering later. It's a big question for people. Um, but I'd like to go back to something we were touching on there about relationships. And um, I think in this time of Corona, we've all been thinking a lot about relationships, about people who are important to us, about church, about what that looks like, about how we uh, bless our communities beyond our own space, um, walk with people in their suffering, even when we can't necessarily go near them. So I would like to ask something around uh, community. How do you participate in community uh, working at home? Because certainly for a lot of us, our work colleagues and seeing them every day has been a big part of our community life <laughs> and going to church and seeing people maybe a couple of times a week has been a big part. So what would you say in your life before Corona helped you to be part of community, even though you're working in general alone at home? Um, let's go with Martin. Are you happy to start? OK, that's that's a really good question, a deep one. Uh, so you've now got a picture of me, uh, 10 years, working too hard, 30 years, I've been walking around the block. Mm. 
And as you walk around the block more or less at the same time each day, you come across the same people. So that is in fact my community. You say hello to them. You end up praying for them, occasionally with them, but you end up finding things about their lives, finding out things about their lives, their birthdays, uh, births of children, deaths, um, when Ramadan is, uh, all those sorts of things. So that's been, um, I mean, one day, here's a immediate example. Uh, one day my mother had just died and I found myself praying for an older lady down the road. I'd uh, posted a letter for her, her newspaper was wrongly delivered to me and so on. So I got to know her a little bit and I found myself praying. And one day the Holy Spirit said to me, and I'm deliberately putting it in that way, and uh, today's her birthday, go and knock on her door and wish her a happy birthday. And um, I thought, okay, Lord, um, I could either walk back the way I'd come, which would be another four, 14 minutes or so. I didn't want to do that. So I said to the Lord, uh, Lord, that may be you, but I'm sorry I haven't got the courage to go and knock on her door and wish her a happy birthday. But this was just before Christmas. So I did say to the Lord, I, I've got the courage to give her a Christmas card. That's acceptable in our culture, blah, blah, blah. If when I give her a Christmas card and I make myself knock on the door, she says, oh, it's my birthday two weeks ago, then I'll know it was you. And that's what happened. Wow. So... <laughs> Yeah, so that's my, my community is all around me. Mm. And uh, not quite with that uh, intensity, but always, but I, I'm praying for uh, those sorts of things. I think that's a, a, a beautiful picture of actually what it looks like to love our neighbors. I think in a lot of cities, we don't really know enough about our neighbours to even say hello, let alone to pray into their lives, um, whether they know it or not. So I see something beautiful about in working at home, you are choosing to be part of where you live. Yeah. And that is, yeah, that's something special that a lot of us haven't had the opportunity to, to do. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that story. It was great. Um, Daniel, what about you? How do you work through community in this in this way of working yeah uh one one thing that it is it's funny now is that uh, when people is is at home so uh, when you go out of home you can see your neighbors and say hello maybe for the first time and this is one thing new for for us uh, also with the with the kid is is funny because when we go with the kid and he's six months old and and people is oh hello that and very, very, very funny that people never say n nothing, <laughs> anything to us. Yeah. But um, uh, also for the for the church, uh, for us, it's a it's a time for more connection. <laughs> that's that's uh, um, something that happened now because uh, we we started um, a, a, a meeting, a Zoom a Zoom meeting for prayer every day. Wow. Um, we we have now. I think that we are in the 45 uh, meeting today. So uh, it's very special that we are connecting in in a, in in that way, and we didn't have that mm. uh, in in the other months because okay, it's not the same that to to see the people and to 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 be with the people is not the same, but we are connecting. In a in a spiritual way that we are don't we are didn't do it in 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 that time pre previous the coronavirus. Yeah, it's interesting that you've been working at home all this time. So we might think, oh, nothing has changed for them. But actually, you're now working at home in a community of people who are also working at home, yeah. um, which is something where you can offer something great to us. But also maybe in this season, we who are now new to working at home, we can also um, be part of community with you in a new way. Um, and that presumably is also changing your experience of working at home because now you're not alone in it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's true. And and uh, I, I saw also uh, the, the opportunity to to like like now we are doing to to talk with people about different ways to to work from home and also uh, people from the church who are uh, asking uh, to me okay how how are you doing that or what is the the, the best way to to make a conference or 
th things like that that mm, people don't uh, don't need <laughs> didn't need and now they they need to now they do yeah that's fantastic so um what would you say are some of your top tips um for for people you've obviously both been sharing a lot in this season with different people and i know that um uh, a lot of people uh, will have really appreciated what you said about scheduling um maybe about self-discipline but maybe tell us what what you think your your top tips are martin maybe we'll start with you um okay so one on time management is i've, I've got three okay just to, okay uh, am I <laughs> I'll allow three, but no more. Okay. The first one is you've got to make yourself make yourself do the task you don't want to do. Okay. Okay. You don't put that off. You make yourself do it. So as part of my scheduling through the day, I will say, okay, I've got to do that. I don't want to do that. And the six things I do want to do. Now, I've got to do the one I don't want to do before the six things I do want to do. Otherwise, that will just weigh in my mind. It might be a phone call. It might be an email but you have to make yourself do that. Mm. That's sort of in the, the, the big planning area. Two details, I, uh, um, about yeah, 18 years ago, so I, I knew I was working on a, a book that would have about 8 million words and it would take me several years. And I know, and my background is linguistics, and I know that most of the words, it was a, a Bible commentary, but most of the words will be common English words, like because, there, was, are, the. Now take the word the, that has three keystrokes. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, what I did, I've gone into my computer and there's a thing called tools autocorrect. If you're making notes, just write down tools autocorrect. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you type the word friend and you spell it wrongly, you spell it F R E I N D E I N D instead of I E N D. If you type it wrongly, E I N D, the computer will automatically change it to I E N D. So, I've gone into that computer program, tools autocorrect, very easy. You can do it in about 30 seconds. And I typed in lots of words. So, like the word because. I've typed in B E C. So if I just type in B E C and then hit enter, then magically it appears as because. And I've done that with about 2000 words. So was, were, with, it's just W, uh, R is A A, the same characters. Obviously, you've got to choose things that are not <laughs> ordinary words. Uh, so I'm doing a Bible uh, commentary at the moment. Uh, the word Jerusalem, so that's J-E-R-X. Amazing. And I reckon after about eight years, I, I, re I did work it out. I think I, I, I saved myself about two weeks work. Wow. So that's one, <laughs> one tip. The okay, first just, tip was, go on, Alice. I'll just comment on that. I think, Martin, that is very efficient. And it's also something that is really specific to yeah. publishing work and that's great because actually for some of our panelists that will be something that thinking about it a little bit more and thinking what are the efficiencies that work for my kind of work what does my kind of work need um f from me to make it more efficient so great tip. It's, it's words you're using all the time so if your name is short or long you don't you don't want to have to type that every every day you just type two or three characters and, and expands and what was your third tip the third tip is I dictate a fair bit into my iPad, which I've got here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> here it is. It's, it's charging at the moment. I dictate into my iPad and then I send that as an email to myself and then I edit that email. I dictate because I can speak more quickly than I can type. And I can say things like, oh, move that earlier or forget that. And I can edit all that stuff out very quickly. So dictate, send it to yourself, then edit. Great. And I think these are principles that can go across whether we're working at home or not, actually. Absolutely. So good tips to take to the future. Um, Daniel, what about you? What, what, what do you say to people as your top tips for working at home? Okay. Um... Well, we, we, we talk about the space and the schedule, so I, I can move to another another things. Uh, but um, 
for for me it's very important to to keep in touch with college and mm -hmm. and with the the team mm -hmm. so uh you you need to well I, i'm working as journalist so it is it, is is very <laughs> it's necessary it's it's fundamental yeah. so um you have to 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 find the the way to maintain this contact but the the thing is that you can use uh, the you can find the the the, the best way the, the best tool to do that uh facebook is not a good tool for that for contact okay. with, with work people i think um, yeah. well maybe the workspace of facebook facebook has a workspace also but i i didn't check uh, that but uh we we use slack Slack is a very okay. useful um, tool, and also we use another tool for another project for for projects. It's Trello or Trello. I'm not sure the. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We can share the the, the links, um, and also um, uh, another and of course the the email. The email is 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 also very good for for work. And this is one of the things uh, you you need to to maintain this contact with with people uh, because uh, because they they will help you to focus on work. Uh, the other thing is that uh, it's, it's it's very good to to have meetings, but only the necessary ones. Mm. And the the meetings has to 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 have a, a very clear purpose. And also on a schedule, <laughs> mm -hmm. because uh, there is nothing uh, that could have could make you uh, uh, waste your time than a meeting that is not with an objective or with a schedule, and it's uh, for minutes and then minutes, uh, hours and more hours of meeting of people talking about you don't know how. No, you have to make a very very clear. Uh, purpose and a schedule uh, with, with the with the this this meeting and also uh, you can use Zoom, uh, Skype, Meet. There are a lot of uh, tools to to do that. Um, the 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 third thing is the uh, a controlled rest. Uh, breaks are still necessary to refresh the mind and hence concentration and performance. Um, you have two temptations here. Uh, one is not taking breaks. Mm. Uh, you have this. This has negative consequences for both work and work performance, and also for health. The other is to stretch your breaks too much. Uh, mm. Rest time should be used to relax and drink tea or coffee, not to do other other things at uh, at home. Um, yeah. uh, it's useful to also to to play in the breaks. Uh, could could be useful for you. So. Oh. That's a really good tip about what to do in a break. Um, I appreciate that because the temptation to do the laundry, as I said, yeah. is quite strong. Um, <laughs> in terms of uh, your your day, could you just describe to us what kind of hours you work and when your breaks are, just to see what works for you? Not that everyone would have the same schedule, but I'm just interested what that looks like for you, particularly at a time in your life where you have a six month old um, in the home as well, and you're balancing yeah. your work with your wife's uh, work as well. So tell us a bit about what that looks like. Yeah, uh, with with the baby is also is is changing a lot <laughs> <laughs> uh, because he he has his own schedule and it's non negotiable. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, uh, we 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 know that uh, he's he's taking a, a a long nap in in the middle of the the morning, so we are focusing this time for work and for work, 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 work. <laughs> and it's like two hours only for work. And we try to be, to, 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 to be very uh, concentrated in that, in that time. Uh, in also in, in, the, in the afternoon, it's, it's the same. Uh, and in the other um, hours of the day, uh, we are trying to, to, to to plan with my wife, I, I plan with my wife the, the day, uh, and the and in the in the night we are talking about the next day, and we we uh, we we see our schedules and we see if we have uh, some meeting. If we have uh, a meeting, uh, okay, I'm I'm with the baby. Um, yes. if, if if I have a meeting, uh, she 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 will be uh, with the with the baby. 
And uh, also in the rest of the day, uh, we are trying to, to, to pass the, the baby <laughs> and <laughs> to use another tools like, uh, okay, we have a, 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 a place here where we, he, he could be with us and with the, uh, with the toys and yeah. with music or something like that. It's not easy. Uh, we, we can, the, the truth is that we, we, when he's awake, we can't focus too much on work, but also we, we can do another things. Um, I, I can uh, answer an email or a, a, a WhatsApp audio with the baby. It's not a problem. And it's also work for me. Mm -hmm. That is amazing and really encourage, I think, to lots of the parents who are um, trying to work at home at this time. I also find it encouraging because I have had incidents where my husband and me, we both need to have a meeting out loud on Skype at the same time. And we actually live in a boat, uh, which is oh. very small. So uh, there's not very much space to have two meetings. Um, yeah. So I think that idea, I will take that tip of the night before having a planning meeting of what time <laughs> different meetings are. I think that sounds excellent. And um, that's a tip I'll take away. So we've got about 10 minutes left and I've got some questions from some of the attendees. I'm just going to click on to ask you guys. Um, okay. Uh, so I think that we got a good tip from Martin already about procrastination, about doing the thing you don't want to do first, which is a really good challenge to us. Um, both on a practical level, but also kind of on an emotional level that you have to identify what you don't want to do and then just do it. Um, Daniel, have you got any particular uh, procrastination avoidance tips? How do you stop yourself from procrastinating? And perhaps reflecting over time, have you got better at this now that you've been working at home for a little bit more time? Hmm. Um... One of the things that uh, I, I, I learned is to, to work uh, in, 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 in the projects that I don't want to work. Uh, I need to schedule a time for this, this, this uh, kind of work that I don't want to, to do. And try to respect that. Yeah. Uh, how to respect that? Well, uh, this could be your, um, your enemy. <laughs> so you have to silence that. Uh -huh. I, I, I always have the, the silence button uh, because I don't want to, to have this, uh, this uh, music all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and also the, the, the notifications, uh, you can just, uh, you can uh, allow only the, the, the important uh, notifications because this could uh, be a very um, distracting uh, object. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing is uh, uh, sometimes uh, you need to, to, to look for uh, to, to look for your partners and also to, to, to share that you have problems or, or if you have uh, things that uh, are, are uh, hard to, to, to manage. You can also, uh, it, it's good to, to, to tell to your, your partners and your, your team, please help me with that. And sometimes this is the, the best thing that I could do. Uh, okay, I have uh, this project and uh, I, I can't uh, do it. Please help me. And sometimes this is the solution. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to be honest and vulnerable, isn't it? When you're working remotely from people, you're not face to face to actually admit that. But actually, as you've said, if you do, then people are often really willing to help and get involved. Um, I've got another question here about um, maintaining a creative and stimulated mind when working on your own without others participating in that creative thinking. So, um, I guess Martin and Daniel, your work is a bit different in terms of how much you work as part of a team. But I know, Martin, that you do still collaborate with others. Um, so do you want to start, Martin, about how do you keep uh, stimulated um, and perhaps some of the projects that need a bit more creative thinking? How do you reach out for that when working at home? Um, well, I do 
primarily it's sort of in terms of personal stimulation and personal. Um, so I, I know that listening to music, model railway, art, nature stimulate me. So I have to immerse myself. So I will sometimes not just do the simple 14 minute walk around the block, but deliberately do 20, 25 minutes, 45 minutes mm -hmm. to a park to center my thoughts. Inevitably, I, I suppose I, I, I don't see the same people, so I'm not praying for the same people. So I can focus more on other things, but usually I find myself ordering particular tasks. That's what I find. If I do that first before that, uh, or, or so it's, it's knowing who we are, it's majoring on that. It's also, as Daniel hinted at there, I think earlier, speaking to people on the phone, particularly. Um, so initiating calls, not just the help, I need help here, but also just staying in touch with people on a professional level as well as on a social level. Yeah. Um, and, and that is far better than email. Obviously email is great for uh, agendas for meetings and minutes and all of that stuff. But in terms of building relationships, email is probably the worst thing. It's hopeless. But in terms of actually so develop good working relationships, there's no substitute for a phone call where if someone's not understood something or you, oh, you, you sound a bit off today, no more right. You know, or you can say, well, you know, I heard your mother wasn't well, how, how's that? Which you wouldn't probably put in an email. So developing all these things, keeping on top of them all. Daniel, creativity in home working. Um, the, 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 the breaks are, are important for creativity. Sometimes you are stuck and it's like, I, 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 I can't uh, write any, any I, I don't know how it happened, okay? Just uh, walk away and, and see the, the sky and come back and, oh, okay, I'm working again. So it's, it's sometimes uh, when you are stuck, uh, you, you, need, you could need that. Um, also for creativity, I found that uh, it is necessary to have uh, contact with people who are uh, who are not the, the, the to to go uh, out uh, of the common sometimes for more creativity. Uh, you you need to find uh, new books, uh, new music, um, yeah. and also new people. Yeah. And this uh, is uh, this in increased your creativity. Mm. Well, that's fantastic advice from both of you there, particularly because a lot of the people watching today will be working in different creative spheres uh, around publishing and uh, writing and actually keeping that creativity so important. We have got about five minutes left um, and I'd like to ask you about prayer and connecting with God uh, wh whilst you're working at home. Where do you find those opportunities during the day to intentionally connect with God and how do you feel him walking alongside you in your day? Um, Daniel, do you want to start? Okay. Um, I, I think that uh, God is always with us all the time and we need to, to have this in, in mind and, and this helps a lot. Uh, it's it is just thinking that the Holy Spirit is in me and I'm working and my work is an offering to God and this changed a lot of your perspective and also have uh, you, you could have your uh, experience of working as a, a worship uh, time and if you uh, understand that I think that you are uh, you, you you will uh, increase all all the all the things that you are doing, mm -hmm. and about the times for for praying or or for for reading the Bible, um, I'm backing again to the schedule. <laughs> I love your schedule already. <laughs> it's, it's so necessary. I'm I'm not a very uh, scheduled person, but you need I, I need it. I need yeah. it. Yeah. If, I, if I didn't do that, I'm, I'm in Twitter all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks so much. That's, that's such a great reminder that work is worship. 
And I think that does change a lot of our perspective. Um, Martin. Okay, this is a, a good one. Um, so I think I go through, I go through seasons. We all go through seasons of these things. And in the past, I've had a, I don't know, a few minutes and I'm deliberately not saying many, be, how many, because, you know. <laughs> each to uh, their own. Hmm? What's that? Each, each to their own. Each to their own. Um, but at the moment, I find myself praying before I get out of bed quite a lot. I find I'm, I'm spending several hours a day um, trying to paraphrase the New Testament. So I'm, I've decided it would be, rightly or wrongly, I've decided to, to sort of follow through a scheme for reading through Leviticus uh, or Ezekiel. In addition to what I'm doing at the moment, it would just be too much. So I find myself reflecting on a paragraph or occasionally a word. Uh, I mean, literally a word, uh, one word, it might be encouragement, it might be warning, uh, it might be supplication, that's a long word, oldie worldy. Um, but, but letting that, saying, okay, you've, you've spent 45 minutes on that one word, now, Martin, what do you think the Lord is saying to you about that in your life right now? But deliberately taking that, making that step, not just immersing myself in finding paraphrases for supplication that say you know how is your life of a prayer for other people for yourself for the world coming on so deliberately uh, taking something I'm working on and, and making it part of my own uh, life mm. yeah I love that sense of invitation that it goes to that personal level even though you're immersing yourself from a perhaps more intellectual perspective at the points you're really choosing to let it go deep so yeah Oh, I'm really sad we've come to the end of our time because there's been so many great tips and it's been really good to chat with you. Um, Daniel, for the first time, Martin, um, we've known a long time, but I'm just so grateful for the time that you've given to us. And I think our panelists um, deserve a clap from our participants. I think uh, I can hear them clapping. Um, and uh, attendees, uh, uh, I am so grateful that you've come from all over the world. Um, if you would like to watch this again, because you didn't have time to write down all the tips, they will be available um, and uh, you will receive it by email the same way as you received the, uh, the information about Zoom. And then we're also hoping to put it on our new YouTube channel for MAI Europe so that you'd be able to see it and share it with others in the future. We have an amazing set of uh, events coming up over the next two weeks. And um, I think you'll all have information about that, but you can also visit our website, which is mai-europe.org. And on there, you'll find all of the information for Spring Stream, which is quite hard to say, Spring Stream um, 2020. Um, and we'd love for you to advertise more. We've still got space for more people to join us and to look at all the different topics that will be covering over this time. Tomorrow, uh, I think we have a very exciting special guest uh, who is an Orthodox priest from um, currently living in Amsterdam. Um, let me just uh, pull up his name. Uh, so he is Father Melitos Weber, and he has um, a doctorate in psychological counselling. He's going to be speaking about spiritual wellness hope versus fear. And I think it's going to be a fascinating conversation with Anna, who's one of our trustees and who's been organizing most of this event. So we are excited. Uh, we are praying for you across Europe and across the world that in this season of challenge that God would bless you richly. And as you work at home today, I'll certainly be praying for me and for you that the tips and the insights and the inspiration that we've gained from today's session would carry us um, into even more worship of the Lord in uh, this time of challenge. So thank you everyone. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Daniel. Thank and you, Daniel. Uh, hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.